I'm Mark Seifter. And I'm Linda Zias Palmer. And this is Arcane Mark. Hello, everyone, and Hi, welcome, welcome to, to a Arcane very special Mark. episode of Arcane Mark. Today, we're talking about the new release for April Fool's Day 2024 Battle Zoo Ancestries Fusions. That's right. Like the past uh, Battle Zoo April Fool's uh, releases, it is a, a project with some funny elements to it that is nonetheless entirely playable in your game. Um, at this present moment, it is available at kickstarter.rollforcombat.com. Uh, as a part of the Battle for Free, as a part of the Battle Zoo Secret Dragon Kickstarter, and in the future, it'll it will be, be on BattleZoo.com yes. eventually. Kickstarter. Yes. That's Did I right. say BattleZoo.Roll for Combat instead of Kickstarter? No, you said it right. Oh, I said it correctly. Eventually, okay. it'll be on BattleZoo.com. Mm -hmm. So that's where, if you're watching this and you're in the future, that's where it'll be. It's a 21 page PDF that's free. And the idea of Battle Zoo Ancestry Fusions is that it's a it's got to be something even wilder than being a dungeon or being yourself or another person from earth sent into a fantasy world with cheats so this time you and one or more friends can work together to play a two-headed giant a three-headed servers or a four-headed hydra with each of the heads played by different players so where did the idea of making fusion as an ancestry come from well we were talking i was talking with steven about what we would do next and steven suggested the two-headed giant as like a riff off of other April Fool's jokes that have been done before. For instance, a two-headed ogre was something that World of Warcraft claimed they were going to do, but didn't. And then they eventually put it into their like MOBA type game, an actual two-headed ogre. And so um, Steven wondered if that was even possible at tabletop RPGs. And I said, it definitely is. And mm -hmm. that is where Fusions was born. So... With the with the fusions, then you have the, the the two or three or four different heads that all can think and act independently. But there's also some elements where, like, they have parts of their body that they share, and they have to decide how they're going to handle that. That's right. And so basically, you for the most part can um, do your own thing, but you're sharing basically the the like motor apparatus for like the movement on the map. So that's a shared action, and people are gonna have to work together to decide how much to move and where. And as long as you're not moving, you just get lots and lots of extra turns and free combo abilities, which we'll see as we get into the ancestry. Now, Linda has seen a few things, but she hasn't seen it all. So we start out as usual with an Ithyria Nyx essay. This is two heads are better than one, which is talking about uh, how some ancestries consider it to be quote normal if you sort of consider yourself to be one person, but Swarm Bloods and Chochori and some other ancestries already don't do that. But that um, is different for fusions because rather than being like an individual system that is made up of different. Um, people that are within it there's actually just literally multiple people yes entirely that uh autonomously control like a different head um and other parts of the body so then we have fusions and we have a, a picture of um let's see if i can get a probably not i can't just get the picture out of it but there's like it's uh, a two-headed giant that half of its body is wearing like plate armor and carrying a giant sword and the other half is wearing a robe and and casting a spell so so that also gets to sort of your one of the the questions that you had to tackle in addressing this is like how do you handle get gear for two different creatures or like if they would want extremely different things because like one of them is wants to be a wizard and one of them wants to be a paladin like what do you do so yeah they just have their own gear and it just covers the the portions of the body that are controlled by one of the individual characters that is part of the fusion and so that's just how it works it's actually honest to goodness is simpler than the intelligent weapon rules uh for, for the intelligent weapon ancestry even though you're multiple characters in one body and even for all the way up to the four-headed hydra so it's a rare ancestry because uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. you're definitely going to need to decide with your group, like, you know, who are the players who are going to be playing the different parts and, and that sort of thing. 
if you can't get along with the other players well enough to decide things, this is not going to work. Then you probably wouldn't want to be in a situation where you and the other players shared your legs. They're large with two free attribute boosts. Uh, common in one language, depending on your heritage. And uh, the traits depend on your heritage. Plus, you have low light vision and the fused body ability. Where you share among a number of characters your body. But you have your own initiative, hit points, conditions, class, and all sorts of other stuff. That's correct. But you do have combined movement where all your actions, uh, including subordinate move actions, uh, like gain, sudden charge and stuff gain like that. the combined trait. And so therefore you and other characters are going to have to decide how far you're going to move. And there's some examples involving sudden charge or a sorcerer flying because they cast fly, but the other heads do not have fly. So you can do it on that sorcerer's turn. Mm -hmm. And then you get free combined feats. It's sort of a consolation for the fact that you have to coordinate with someone so much that is actually not that easy. And so you get just a bunch of free feats. And by a bunch, I mean a combined feat is a new type of feat that's in this product. Everyone in the fusion needs to take it in order to use it. But you also get several of them that everybody in the fusion gets. So, like, if you're a Hydra, then you get a total of 12 feats. But I understand that's just three feats that all four of yes. people got that same copy of the feat so they could use it. And uh, that's only over the course of multiple levels. By level 15, you, get, you have a total of three combined feats that each of the people in your fusion have. Now, you can use combined feats without being a fusion if you want in your game. If you want to have combo moves like X-Strike and Chrono Trigger or um, any of those other ones, then you could do it. Um, but I created them initially with fusions in mind, but they could easily be used for multiple other things. So, Rico says, can't decide things with this group. Enjoy deciding things at the start of every round. Yes. So, the three heritages that are in this book are two-headed giant where uh you basically have more skills as a two-headed giant and, your and you have is either Yotin. two or four arms yep then there's a cerberus which has these chains uh usually that can hold things for them uh they usually has six of those and some jaws and a good scent and uh additional language is diabolic or requiem and then there's Hydra. Hydra is the most complicated one. So it's got like eight like snake tail like limbs that can hold on to things. And uh, it then also has jaws. But you're also difficult to kill by most means. Unless a creature knows your weakness or kills all of you at once. When you're at zero hit points your head is cut off but you don't die unless you're brought to zero by death effect. Yes. If an effect explicitly decapitates you like a vorpal weapon you still don't die. But you're immediately reduced to zero hit points and dying four. Even when your dying value reaches four or more, you don't die unless all your heads are at zero hit points at the same time or the effect that brought your dying value to four or more dealt fire or acid damage. Aha, but in exchange, the effects that deal acid or fire damage increase your dying value by one more than normal. That's correct. And if you're unconscious at zero hit points but not dying, as long as you don't have a wounded value of four or higher, after 1d4 plus one round, you regain one hit point, your head regrows, and you become conscious. Aha! Uh -huh. So it is really like the cauterize the stumps with acid and fire if you want to kill the Hydra. Yes. Thief. But if it keeps coming back until you're wounded for, you're at least out of the fight at that yes. point. You just don't die mm -hmm. if they don't have acid and fire. But they might be able to kill you by killing all the heads. Yes. Even if they don't have acid or fire because they, they can... Like, it's not impossible to win a fight against the Hydra without acid or fire. It's just very annoying, especially if they have healing. Yes. Their additional language is Draconic. So that's the basic heritages that you have to work with here. Um, and you can download it and read along if you want. It's free. Um, you don't even have to do anything on the Kickstarter. When it's on BattleDoo.com, you have to like make an account so you can use BattleDoo.com. But when it's on the Kickstarter, you can just get it right now. Um, so... Then there's some feats. There's fusion lore, where you, you know, the typical ancestry lore feat. Mm -hmm. uh, fusion magic is a fun one. So it's what gives you a cantrip that one of the other people in your fusion knows. Oh, that's cool. Because uh, it's like, oh yeah, I gotta borrow this one. Then it's got keen scent for the non-Cerberi to have some more scent, kind of similar to the Cerberus does. 
Uh, there's the It Takes Two sidebar, which has the full explanation of how to handle uh, corner cases of being in two bodies. It talks about the fact that you have your own class and background, though please do you can't pick backgrounds that totally contradict. Like, so, like, please don't pick the one person was raised by animals in the forest and the other was raised Another one was a princess palace. who was raised in the royal palace. That doesn't necessarily work. Although, you know, Sleeping Beauty was a princess who was actually raised by the animals and the, so the fairies. So come up with, so like, some way that your maybe. story makes but sense. But, like, if you have, like, hermit versus, like, bartender, it's like, yeah. I lived in the woods as a hermit, but also was a bartender in the city. It's like, mm -hmm. well, maybe... Maybe not. Maybe not. Or sheriff and, like, outlaw. <laughs> So like, like I was the sheriff, and I was trying to bring in the most notorious outlaw. Who well, maybe they're like a vigilante, body. and like. <laughs> anyway, um, you can have separate backgrounds that's based on what you're focused on, mm -hmm. and uh, it talks about you have separate hit points and conditions. It's possible for one creature refusing to die, or one to be turned to stone while the rest is not. One polymorph while the rest hasn't, in which case they look like a bizarre chimera. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a few exceptions. Like, if you try to grow or shrink, you have to hit all of them. Otherwise, you can't be like, oh, I'm going to make, like, one half tiny. My head grew to large. What happened? We were already yep. large. Where this head grew to huge, what does that mean? You have to grow, be able to grow everyone. Mm -hmm. Or nobody grows. Same with shrinking. And then um, there's also effects that affect um, your combined actions, like movement. So, like, if you get webbed into the ground and can't move then that can prevent, potentially prevent um, your movement, not because of this rule, but because of the rules for combined action that says all the characters must be capable of taking yeah. a combined action. And if one of you is immobilized, they are not capable of taking the move action, which is combined. And it also talks about how, like, you usually you have a different player for each head, but... If you're playing a game that has uh, fewer than four players, you even need, like, you could play, for example, a game with one player who's playing a four-headed Hydra, and that's yes. the... People often wonder, like, what should I do? I don't have enough players, and this this is a pretty interesting way to just handle that, of just like, yeah, you're a Hydra. You have <laughs> four heads. They each have a different class. Go wild. So there's other feats. The f our first combined feat let's split up gang <laughs> is our first uh combined feat where um basically you gather mystic energy and split in a flash of colorful lights forming separate bodies for every member of your fusion they're each medium and so like a giant turns into two roughly like humanoid forms the servers turns into three like medium-sized wolves or, or human-sized dogs the hydra is like four human-sized serpents and you can, if you want them to be different colors, so you have the red uh, yeah. <laughs> snake and yellow snake and blue snake that they combine to form Hydron, uh, you can do that if you want. Um, they temporarily lose f the fused benefits um, and detriments and combine movement. They can't use any other combined action except for to recombine. Mm -hmm. uh, and they all have to be adjacent to each other to recombine. Uh, but that way, if you, you know... Um, having some issues with moving together with your team or you so can't like somebody got do. hit by somebody got like messed up in their movement or like had other things going on it's like uh we're kind of in trouble because this one got petrified mm -hmm. and yes uh don said that it could be a voltron power ranger mech Definitely. oh yeah absolutely we could even do a heritage that's a five person like automatonish heritage oh, at yeah. some point if we ex ever expand it but you could also by default be split up and just use this to combine it's like, now we shall combine the form, our final form. Because this split-up gang lasts in last until you re It lasts until you use it again. Oh, special. If you're a Hydra, you you can't, uh, you can't, you're not all invincible because you don't have well, the one-hand one body. And so the Hydra rules sort that of that say that. It says if all of your heads are defeated, you're defeated. Right. And you only have one head when you yes. split. So it's just a reminder in there. But, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Then there's the look both ways feed, uh, where you spend an action to look both ways in order to uh, pick one person in your fusion to gain all around vision. It doesn't have to be you. It could be whoever you want to protect with all around vision by looking both ways. Midnight head gives you dark vision, but only your head can see better than, dark <laughs> than the others. Racing thoughts gives you touch telepathy, which can help you argue with your other heads more easily and quickly. 
<laughs> raise a barricade is a combined action where everybody spends an action to raise a shield that applies to everyone in the fusion. Very handy for your hands if the two-hander and the bow person just have a shield person who can raise the shield for them. They do all have to spend the action, but they don't have to hold the shield. Mm -hmm. um, share Vigor is one action where um, each member of your fusion chooses whether to give or receive hit points, and then they can um, kind of swap around who has which many hit, how many hit points. Uh, then there's fifth level. Level five. Level five. Um, aha. So it's, it's, or like Captain Planet when our powers combine. Absolutely. It's Zluti Fondon. There you go. Um, so all for one um, is a one action combined where you and all members of your fusion work together to pierce your foe's defenses. Each member of your fusion strikes the same target. Combine all before applying weaknesses, resistance, and the like. If any of the members of your fusion use the aid reaction to assist the attack rolls of another member of your fusion, the assisted member gains a circumstance bonus to their damage roll equal to the circumstance bonus to their attack roll. So it's good with if you use it with um, one, one for, for all. all. Yes. Because one for all <laughs> makes it easy to use your um, aid. But you can then use on all for one. But this is but this is an orc product, so it was not able to. It doesn't reference one for all because it is an orc product, yes. and one for all is not an orc product. So. That's right. But we it can happens say to be well, good for one for all. Just coincidentally, we get right. Yes. <laughs> coincidentally. Uh, there you go. Coder says it can be a buff for aid. Well, and, and you know what? It can be. Uh, it can be aid is already pretty good. Members but it makes sense that the members of a fusion would be particularly good at helping each other. Yes. And members of your fusion who haven't acted yet this round increase their multiple attack penalty even though their next turn hasn't started yet. This applies to future uses of all for one or another combined attack like X strike on the same turn. And then your fusion can only perform all for one strikes during the turn of the member of the fusion acting first in initiative that round. That makes sense. Normally you could actually choose which one is going to do the combined action but the multiple attack um, repercussions of waiting and doing this at the end of the round were really, really funky and required annoying tracking. So just doing it first, way, easier way yeah, yeah. easier. So there's also a sidebar about combined activities that it basically is the thing I said where um, you have to work together on it, but there's specific rules where the first time a character in the fusion gets a turn each round, everybody decides then and there how many actions like, hey, you're going to spend on combined activities. Mm-hmm. Uh, and which ones you're going to use. Then you pay the actions for it. But you don't have to actually perform the actions benefits yet. Unless it says you do. Like um, all for one. Um, and so you can wait and do it at the most opportune time. Unless the um, ability says that mm -hmm. you can't. And what happens like. Let's say that everybody paid two actions. And you did it like on the second person's turn. of thir or Third. But then like the third person was stunned and couldn't actually do it that's a good question linda and that question is mentioned there uh, the answer which is that once the actions are committed the fusion decide which action to perform you have to have enough actions to spend uh to contribute to the future turn and um oh there it, it is if it they're become there, stunned slower, they become otherwise they're unable to act after previously contributed their next turns action to combined activity it is disrupted unless its effects have already occurred for example if one character in a fusion is immobilized the fusion can't use a combined move activity because the immobilized condition prevents that character from moving so you're incentivized to use it sooner unless it mm -hmm. takes a little while to set up which it could like if you want to do something like on the last person's turn after you moved on a previous person's turn to set them up for it so then there's a two action emergency shunt once per day none of your members of your fusion is immobilized and you stride without it being combined action just like shunt yourself somewhere that you need to go so once per day you can spend two actions to move everybody yes without without anyone else investing their action that's correct it, it could be crucial at certain points then there's fusion leader where um, you are really good at getting the other people in your fusion to follow the expert from you. And you're very good at aiding other members of uh, your fusion. So you are just like perfect at getting your fusion to do things. It also can be good for a uh, one for all build, although you don't really need that much help uh, to 
critically aid someone. So then there's Hydrodynamic Hydra. <laughs> the original Hydra was like kind of a swimmer uh, in mythology. I mean, that's why his name is Hydra. Mm -hmm. And so you can get amphibious and swim speed with Hydrodynamic Hydra. Blah. It's all a lot. There's also the fifth level feat, Shared Vigilance, a free action for uh, Cerberus, which is a fortune effect. When you're about to roll initiative and at least one member of your fusion is rolling perception for initiative, then all of you roll and you take the middle result and you all go then. <laughs> and so it specifies if there are three different results, the middle one is the one that is not the highest or the lowest, but if there's two of the results are the same, the middle one is the one that was repeated. Yes. Just to be very clear. Just to clear. be very clear, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think... If you ask 10 people on the street, they would have also determined that in any situation. But, but still, might as it's well. It's still important. So, uh, let's see. There's also a few other things. Storm of Jaws is a Hydra feat. It's two actions combined. So, everyone in the party spends two actions. And it basically, you attack up to eight creatures. by att Each head attacks up to twice. And uh, the attacks count toward the multiple attack penalty for everyone in the fusion, but only after Storm of Jaws is over. That's a lot of attacks. Yes. But, you know, if you have, like, a wizard, they probably weren't thrilled that they had to be part of this anyway. So, like, it has to be pretty good. It's, now, mm -hmm. if, if everybody in the entire party is a melee Jaws character, <laughs> then, Jaws, then it's Jaws, very, Jaws. very good. Yes. Because uh, it's Storm of Jaws. And there's this cipher here also that talks about, like, why why the free feats. Yep. Then there's X-Strike. Everything has X-Strike. Sea of Stars has X-Strike. Chrono Trigger has X-Strike. Fusions has X-Strike. We all have X-Strike. And that mm -hmm. is where Two-Headed Giant attacks in the shape of an X, basically flanking with itself and causing the enemy to be flat-footed. Legit. Ninth level Barricade Block uh, requires raise a barricade. And when you raise the barricade, you can shield block for anybody in the fusion. Then there's cross training where you gain the multi class dedication feat for one of the main classes of another member of your fusion. Oh, yeah, because you're like, yep, well, I mean, I was there when you were doing your druid. Training, yes, that's so. correct. Even if you don't meet the modifiers, like, I had to sit through five years of wizard school, <laughs> even though I'm a barbarian. <laughs> I didn't want to, but I kind of remember some of that stuff. And then the wizard's <laughs> like, "Yeah, well, remember when we w remember when we went on the quest to slay the to slay the the you know the dire wolf pack or something like that, and we mm -hmm. had to track across the frozen Norths in order to find the the fundamental source of their ice magic or something like that." And then, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. There's also the reaction. Did you mean me? Once per day when a foe targets one of the other members of your fusion with a harmful effect and not you, but they could have targeted you, mm -hmm. they target you. So you can be like, oh, crud, they just hit the, you know, they just hit the will save of, like, the, of, like, I don't know, who's the worst at will saves? It would be, like, who's the... Who's bad at will saves? I don't know. Um, like... What is the worst class of will saves? I mean, it's it's going to be some martial class. Maybe it's like the alchemist. The alchemist, yeah. They hit their sit the will save. Like of pseudo like martial. Maya, because yeah. they have intelligence and oh, other things, so yeah, their yeah. wisdom's probably not that good. They just hit the alchemist will save, and you're like, did you mean cleric? I think it's you like, meant cleric. I really did not mean cleric. Thank you very much. Then there's energetic assault, where um, you can do persistent damage on a critical hit. And it doesn't have to be the same. Like, the cover art has different elements on each of the heads. Um, there's also a fusion magic adept where you get a first and second level spell from another member of your fusion that, um, in addition to the cantrip you have from them, look every way where you're always looking both ways and you just constantly are protecting one member of your fusion from flanking from weaker opponents and you can spend the action to switch who you're protecting. Legit. Then at 13th level, boulder throw for two-headed giant. You, you both sides of the giant, like, work together to toss a giant boulder. And it just deals a bunch of 14d6 bludgeoning damage once per hour. And uh, increasing eventually to 28d6 bludgeoning damage. So one of the things for these effects where, like, everybody is working together to do things. There's a, there's a side right here that talks about it, too, where it's like, 
Well, because everybody's working together, you wouldn't want it to be like massive success or complete failure. So even even when a creature critically succeeds against these super combined actions and attacks, they still take some damage in effect. That's correct. And then the critical then their critical failure is not like and then it's double and massive and everything like that necessarily. Yes, in this case, the 28d6 um, at max level goes up by 28 on a critical failure, but they are stunned one and knocked prone, which is very annoying for their action economy. Um, and a regular failure is full damage and knocked prone. Then there's enveloping chains, which is a kind of techie ability to use three characters' actions, but it's very good at what it does compared to other spells and effects of itself. So it's 13th level, two actions for all three heads, once per hour. This is Cerberus. Cerberus. 30-foot mm -hmm. emanation. And it's going to deal some amount of bludgeoning damage, like pretty much no matter what, even on a critical success. Give a speed penalty, counteract teleportation effects. Um, for e uh, if they Even on a success, it'll mm -hmm. do it for one round. And on a failure, it will do it for... Um, Grab for a minute. For a, They are also grabbed by the chains. And they have to, a, oh, I see. They have to escape normally and also attempt a will save to avoid being restrained by the mental power of the chains. That's correct. And not only that, but the mental power of the chains can... Uh, even if they escape the chains, they still have trouble teleporting. And on a critical failure, they are fully restrained for a round. The initial damage... Uh, and damage for failing their will save each round also increases. So it's not a lot of damage for three heads, but the teleportation blocking compared to like a dimensional anchor type mm -hmm. thing, it's an area. So it's almost like it's doing like a black tentacle plus a AOE dimensional anchor at yeah. a pretty competitive level once per hour. But that's because the action economy is pretty steep. You better know that you want to lock these enemies down um and it better be worth it because it's taking three characters to do it so then there's fusion magic impresario where you gain a third and fourth uh, rank spell from uh the other member of your fusion that they know so you're really borrowing some of their spells mm -hmm. here fusion's reach gives you a 10 foot long reach as long as you are large for you but maybe not the other heads you've yes. always had a bit of a longer neck or better, better control, control of your, your limbs yeah. Uh, then there's Shared Mind, which is a reaction whenever another member of your fusion is about to attempt a will save against a mental effect that could affect you but didn't target you. Uh, basically, even though you were originally weren't targeted, you both roll will saves. You both use the higher of the D20 results and add your own individual modifiers and take the effect. So uh -huh. you could be affected You could by be it. affected too, but you could also protect them. If you both roll kind of mediocre and just like regularly fail, or maybe you knew you had a good will save, so you succeed and they fail with that roll, then you're going to get the success effect, which could be annoying, which you wouldn't have had to deal with before. But it's almost definitely going to pull them out of critically failing unless yeah, you're very sure. unlucky. So, And you can just do that whenever you want. And then Vigorous Regrowth is a two-action combined once per day for Hydra that for one minute, every member of your fusion gains regeneration equal to their level overcome by fire and acid. And... Uh, as normal for a high draft, your wounded value becomes four or higher. You stay unconscious until your wounds are healed. Also, it means that at the start of each of your turns, you regrow your severed head if you're at zero hit points. Nice. So, uh... Make it even more annoying for anyone trying to kill your Hydra four PCs. That's correct. It's much more, um... It's much spicier than a regeneration spell ancestry feat would usually be, which would usually be a 17th level feat. Mm -hmm. But, all four of you have to do it together. And so that is a pretty significant half. Yeah, because it's an eight action activity. If you can do it outside of combat, it's mm -hmm. fantastic. But in combat, it's actually pretty expensive. So the fact that it has better regeneration at a lower level than anyone else can get, I think is more than justified. Uh, and then 17th level, Beyond the Grave, is a once per 10 minutes, two action, concentrate. You basically puppet one of the heads of your dead other fusion members. Um, and they gain the minion trait, and basically they they have their original AC, saving throw modifiers, perception, skill modifiers, but they only have 70 hit points, and they lose hit points every time you make them do anything. And you can only have them stride, strike, and contribute actions to combined activities. 
But that does mean that you can still use your massive combos even after somebody died. one or more members of your fusion are dead. That's right. And if they want to disrupt it they, and attack that one, again, they have to waste it on a dead one. Mm -hmm. There's also fusion confusion. Once per hour for two actions, it just basically exposes foes to dealing with all the arguments you always have to deal with being in a fusion and they get confused. Uh, there's also make my fusion grow for one action so that's part of an answer to like the okay but how do you actually deal with if you want to like become larger yes one action the whole fusion becomes enlarged uh and so it actually works because it affects everybody and, and then there's the most damaging effect in all of pathfinder that's correct omega beam it does 40 d12 in a 20 foot wide beam up to 300 feet long up to 20 feet wide. It can be yeah. less. It goes on the last person's turn, though. It's once per day. Two actions yes. for all four of the heads. If they critically succeed, they only take 40 damage. Yeah, they only take 40 force damage on a critical success. That's pretty pathetic at level 17 yes. for, for for eight actions. But if they critically fail, then they take 40 d12 plus 100 and are dazzled for a minute and stunned one. Correct. Which is like... I think just is enough to kill a pit fiend on average or it's close mm -hmm. on the critical failure um at that point and there's art for that of course of course there's art for them charging up an omega beam i mean what what else are we gonna do why would you not so yeah this is battle to enter these fusions and uh yes you can be dark side too if you want kojo you can do anything <laughs> kojo says to use beyond the gray you have to say it just like mark did that's right the only way you can use it is if you say beyond, beyond the, the grave, grave. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct oh my god also you have to say Ma magic wand make my fusion grow <laughs> so how many references did you sneak in to tv shows did you sneak into this i don't know there's a lot like a lot of things this one seemed to be like primarily references to cartoons I mean, they kind of were. And even, like, the name Fusion, it's not exactly the same thing, but, like, there's some um, shows and other things where, like, two characters that are normally different characters combine mm -hmm. into one body to become more powerful. Like, in Dragon Ball Z, they did that, and those are, like, called Fusions. Yeah. Where it's, like, Vegeta and Goku combine into Gogeta. Yeah, exactly. Um, but th this is more of like a Hydra or a Cerberus or a Two-Headed Giant situation. But Fusions is still a good name for like a combined character. Aha. Uh -huh. And Kojo says the VOD of the episode should also come with the Kickstarter so people will know how to say those things properly. Well, I can send <laughs> it to Steven. He does have some videos at the bottom of the Kickstarter. Well, that, that is true. Yep. Beyond the grave. Beyond the grave. So, like, how did you decide that those were the three that you were going to use? Was it, like, I want two heads, three heads, and four heads? That's correct. And there's other ideas. And the Cerberus is, like, really iconic for three, and then you're just, like, you know, a Hydra is there. There's like, other cool. ideas. There's other things. Like, we can do, if we ever expanded it, we could have, like, the five that are, like, somehow a giant construct. And we could mm -hmm. do three that are asymmetrical for a Chimera, where everybody's got a different head. Oh, yeah. Uh, right? Because that's also a three-headed type thing and so we we've got a lot of of place to go even though it's already at like a 21 page ancestry file um there's still more that can be done with this i could also see one it doesn't even like have it. a ton of art for it and it's still yeah. made that many pages so. i could also see one where it was like kind of like a flush warp type thing or like mm -hmm. a you know a fusion of like medium people who got combined or like yeah Definitely. There's even some like battle zoo creatures. Like, wasn't there like an amalgam mess that was like a, a wizard and a demon that got combined due to a summoning gone wrong? And there's like a teleporter accident creature in Fast Theory 3. Yeah. That um, is multiple people who got combined in a teleportation spell gone wrong. So there's definitely other things out there that could be fusions uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. So, Linda, what do you think about fusions? I think they're cool. I think it would be fun to play one of them in uh, one of the campaigns that we do with like fewer than the fewer than normal people and just like I'm all these characters because it's also fun because I, I enjoy having characters kind of like discuss things with each other and not always agree and like kind of that element with a character that did have to agree with their fellow party members mm -hmm. to get things done. 
be an interesting negotiation. Mm-hmm. That's right. And uh, Alfro says Amalgamites are uh, the, the Adversary 3 creature that combines um, in a teleport. And that's true. But Amalgam Ness, I think, is a separate Battle Zoo Adversary Strange and Unusual creature that would combine in a summoning. Um, so they have very similar names, maybe. But I mean, it's because it comes from the same roots. So. They both come from the root of Amalgam. Indeed. Yes. So yeah, I think I think you're right, Linda. It is funny when characters have different opinions about things. I always like to play into it when I think my character is critically failed. Yeah, I, it's funnier when they. I feel like when you personally disagree with your character in some way, or you know they're misinformed, or like that they don't know this particular. I mean, last night everybody had one idea except my character had a totally different idea. So I thought I may have critically failed, and so I made my. I made my explanation of what I was saying sound a little bit more ridiculous. And it turned out I had critically succeeded. <laughs> and so the GM is like, why are you, are saying, you saying these things are from Lang? And I was just <laughs> like, I don't know. It seemed like I critically failed when I thought these friendly river folk were going to be like enslaving us on a boat. And so mm -hmm. I just kind of added some extra features to make me seem a little bit weirder. You know, Mark, you forgot that my character is always the one who critically fails in about any water. check that has anything remotely to do with it's water. It's not just that character. It's two characters in a row it's with any that group. Character, any character that I with play that with that GM in yes. that group is going to critically or fail that any foundry, check. I guess. That, yes. it's because it was that Fa same, oh yeah, foundry doesn't that work. same yes, that's instance of foundry. That you're particular right, foundry right. server has it out for you when you're recalling knowledge about water. I have critically failed so many water -based Linda things. has critically failed six. It's like, what is the water? What is the water creature she has critically felt six for six what are these creatures that are on a boat on the water like i don't critically fail my recall knowledge that often it's always related it's to always water. about water in that <laughs> that server that's true there we go if we were if we were playing a fusion you would be the head that always recalled the wrong information about water Water, and the other heads would never listen to me well i think it's just karmic revenge from when you lied to people about shadow so who again in your very first <laughs> campaign and then you tricked yourself into thinking that there were shadow so who again on the yeah, shadow plane and, and you were wrong about you were wrong about aquatic creatures yeah. Because later, after you had cleared up their uh, mm -hmm. problems that they had from seeing Dagon, where they were afraid of sea creatures, and there was not an issue anymore, you went to the Shadow Plane again, and you were like, well, we need to bring our ranger's favorite enemy aquatic creatures because of the Shadow Sahu Yeah, well, we again. didn't want them to see what we were doing in the Shadow Plane. That's right. So, so you we told them there like were the sea, sea creatures, creatures so they would like hide. afraid of, so they'll hide. And then yes. they'll come out and see what we're doing. And then Linda, Linda convinced party. herself that there were sea creatures that lived on the Shadow Planet. In, my defense, sea of in my defense, it was my first ever campaign, so I didn't have as much grounding in like what is actually there. In the and system. what was actually a lie that, that it, she made up yeah. herself. <laughs> <laughs> What we do in the shadow plane, says Kojo. I can't even remember what we did that we didn't want them to see. But like, whatever. I don't even know. It doesn't matter. It's I you. think it may have literally somewhat involved water things um, mm -hmm. as well. Um, so it was like sort of less dishonest than it seemed, but it was it was went through. I don't through know, a man. Way of that was like what fifteen years ago at this point. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. So there we have it, and we have now learned about Battle Zoo Ancestry's fusions, and Linda has given it her four thumbs up, two for each of the fusions. <laughs> uh, Toes too, I guess. I don't. Yeah, there you thumbs. go. So uh, without further ado, let's say goodbye to YouTube. Indeed. Bye, YouTube. See you Bye. next time. <laughs>